All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from lovely Atlanta, Georgia, by Bill Dickinson. How are you doing, Bill? John, good, thank you. Um, nice to be present to you and to your audience. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. And Bill's a seasoned leader and author with nearly three decades of experience in innovating and designing leadership development programs. His passion lies in equipping organization leaders with essential competencies to thrive and empower others. You have impacted companies such as Boeing, Coca-Cola, Abbey Vi uh, Biopharmaceutical. Uh, you're also the author of the book, Optimizing Self, a guided workbook to elevate your impact as a leader. And what we're going to talk about today is embracing authentic leadership, a journey of self-discovery. Sure. Um, so, Bill, let's let's get straight into it. Um, let, let's define what authentic leadership is to begin with, because I think authenticity has been thrown around as a word lately. I mean, it's almost losing meaning because it's been thrown around so much. But what do you what do you define authentic leadership as? So, John, I define authentic leadership as someone who transparently, empathically knows themselves. They, uh, I and other authentic leaders know what we do well, and we know where our limitations are. Um, we're, we're willing to be vulnerable with, um, I don't have that. Um, and yet acknowledging that, I still want to be able to be a leader that is mindful of the heart of another, mm -hmm. uh, coaches another, develops another. So it's integrity. It's some form of honesty, vulnerability. Um, but it, at the end of the day, it's my ability to care deeply for someone else so that they feel empowered to lead their own lives and to lead mm. others. That's my take on it. Right. So, so I mean, I, I think that's a great definition. So, um, so one of the things I think that people struggle with now because it's, you know, they hear things like, "Well, you need to be vulnerable. You need to be this. You need to be that," and they, and they struggle with how do you do all of this and yet at the same time still you know, progress forward and lead people and do all the other stuff because uh, sometimes, and I think it's, it's, it's one of the unfortunate things is we always call these things soft skills and soft skills. Unfortunately, people think, Oh, well, you know, I don't really need that stuff. Um, and however, you know, people obviously do, but how do you get that balance right? And how do you help people? Cause sometimes I feel like the pendulum swings one way or the other, and people don't really know how to get that happy medium. Yeah, so I, you're right on, unfortunately, um, people, leadership, empathy, emotional intelligence, um, adaptability are called soft skills. In, in my opinion, they're core skills. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely foundational. So here's how I try to frame this is we have been promoted, hired, to lead other people. People are broken. They carry their own emotional dirt. Mm -hmm. So we have to have some degree of sensitivity and empathy for that. While we also validate their worth and support them in their role and develop their new skill set. So, um, if we don't develop people, they are likely not going to perform in the way that is expected of us as the leader. So it sounds crass, but if you want others to deliver, to produce, you've got to care for them. You've got to develop them. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure they feel comfortable in their role. And that is a hard lift. You, yeah. you have to be willing to give of yourself to some degree to say, I care and I want you to succeed in your work. Um, 
it, I, it's interesting to me how we do struggle with that. Yeah. And I think part of it is, Bill, um, I think part of it is, as, as you said, I mean, to do that, you kind of have to do it with yourself first. So you have mm -hmm. to be self-aware. So you have to go, I mean, we all carry baggage. We all have trigger points. We all have um, situations that uh, we react better to than other situations. But we we have to learn a lot about ourselves if we're going to be able to empathize with other people and to be able to connect with other people in that way and i think that's probably one of the pieces that's missing the most is the is people doing the self-discovery piece it's hard work so it is it is hard work taking a look at self now it's beautiful work mm -hmm. it's powerful work but um we need to be able to lead ourselves if we want to lead others I'm a big proponent of spend time with who you are because everybody already has an innate dignity. They're already a person of worth and value. So my job is to help them appreciate that. Um, and we've got to spend time with ourselves. I also think, John, we need to invite the input of others. Mm. So we have to have feedback input observations that help inform our self-awareness uh in likely in more times than not it's going to be validated mm. but we have to we we have to be willing to spend time with ourselves and ask others is this who i am my personality my qualities my competencies my experiences where where do I fall short? And you can be honest with me. Mm -hmm. Please, please be honest with me. Yeah, and and you know, part of that, uh, Bill, is it's great when you do invite uh, feedback like that from other people, um, because and obviously you have to have some kind of trust relationship yeah. there. But um, the good thing is that if you and if you if you're willing to do that and willing to listen to the feedback, I mean, it can be it can be quite uh, enlight enlightening. But it also, in many ways, it's usually confirming because you usually deep down know exactly. You just probably don't want to admit it. Well, you know, and in, in John, in my book, uh, optimizing self, mm -hmm. I do speak to the place of feedback. So, and and I frame it with kind of sensitivity or empathy for the person who's discovering it. But here's my premise. Our friends and colleagues have already sized us up. Mm -hmm. They already have opinions, observations. So they're just not telling us. So because they have them, why don't we invite them? Um, there does there does have to be some degree of respect and confidence that this person is not going to beat me up. Right. But most people are generally speaking well intentioned, and if you ask, they'll give it to you. Um, because my again, my premises are already thinking it. So why not discover it and learn from it? Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I think those are I think those are really good. I think those are really good points. And I think that if you do that, if as a leader, if you do reach out and look for for that feedback from people, uh, I think I think most people are are going to be very genuine in how they react to it rather than I mean, most people aren't just going to take it as an opportunity to beat you, you know, to beat up right. on you, but they're going to be. Um, and and I think then that builds a, and then that obviously makes them more amenable to feedback f coming their way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm a particularly, and you'll know this, John, in in our work, our roles, our companies. If anybody could ever have the opportunity to engage in a 360, a formal professional feedback process, direct reports, peers managers, um, external vendors or clients, mm -hmm. it really is both validating and informing. Um, and it's data that we need in order to grow. So if anybody could ever do that within a company, 
I encourage you to do it mm -hmm. uh, and take advantage and ask a manager, a mentor, a peer to kind of walk with you through the, pro through the process. Mm -hmm. That provides authenticity. Mm -hmm. That helps me to be a bit more true to myself because I understand myself. Yeah. And I, and I think also as part of that, that we also need to in, we also need to encourage people to see the good in other people, see what people do. Well, here's the thing, uh, Bill, right? We're excellent at spotting people doing things wrong or mistakes or things that aren't working. We're really, by human nature, we're really bad at catching people doing things well. And I think sometimes that's a, that's a switch you have to flip yeah. and say, okay, I'm going to start catching people doing things well. I'm going to recognize and compliment them. And that way, then when I do need to correct them or I do need to point out something, um, they're going to take it on board that much better because they know, it, again, it's it's all about balance, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, Gallup, Gallup does some wonderful work, of course, when it comes to businesses and leadership. They've, they've done a study on recognition in the workplace. And most people are starving for recognition. Mm -hmm. Just the acknowledgement that they've put forth effort, um, that they're doing on time, acceptable or extraordinary work. But two thirds of us are hungering just for recognition. And we are much more willing to stay with our employer, our company, our leader, if that leader provides recognition. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not quite the same as feedback, but they're cousins. Yeah. So recognize your folks for effort. Recognize them for their value. Recognize them for a project they've just completed or they're struggling through. Um, because if, if we do that, they're going to perform just a little bit better, a little bit more confidently, uh, productively. Um, that's a real opportunity for us, I think, as leaders. No, I, I think absolutely. And I think uh, I actually it's 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 funny you mentioned the Gallup because I was actually reading that report earlier today for something else. And uh, it said that ideally, uh, Ideally, you recognition every seven days. Yes, that frequently, that frequently, and mm -hmm. and to your point, like recognition and feedback, you know, a little bit different. But however, uh, it is amazing how how far recognition goes, and it doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to give awards out. You don't, I mean, to be, yeah. you know, just informal recognition of saying good job or, or anything, or even better. And I think this is sometimes people miss out on this part, or even going to your boss or somebody higher in the organization and saying, listen, Bill's been doing a fantastic job. It would be great if you sent him an email, you know, saying well done to him or her, whatever, um, uh, rather than, you know, and that goes an awful long way to, and then they trust you more because they're saying, oh, you're feeding up the ladder. Yeah. And I'm yeah. doing a good job. Yep. Yep. The, um, and of course, the more specific we can be, mm -hmm in recognizing somebody's output, hard work, you know, um, uh, Tom, I really appreciate the way that you have spent the last two weeks on this project and presentation. Yes, it's got to be right. And I, I see you doing your best to make it right. Thank you. And if there's something I can do to support you, please let me know. Mm -hmm. But I do recognize it and value it. So some specificity goes a long way with recognition versus just at a boy. Right, I'll take right. it, but I'd rather have some specificity to it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I I agree because I mean I think if it's just oh well done, pat on the back, everything, yeah, it's nice for that moment. But as you said, if it's not specific, I mean it's also it doesn't really have that much impact because I'm it's a nice feeling for a moment, but I'm not relating it to anything in particular. Um, and I think the other thing too, Bill, is, you know, with, um, with leading people is being very careful also to give them 
you know, recognition of the work they're doing. Maybe when you're reporting out, when you're doing things, you know, that are company wide is actually pointing out the people on your team who did things. Because I see far too many leaders and it's that temptation to try and sort of go, well, I'm the leader. Therefore, I need to make this like this is I've done all of this. Therefore, therefore, I need to where instead of going, if you are confident in yourself as a leader, then, you know, part of that confidence should be that you are comfortable with recognizing the people who contributed and deflecting the praise from yourself onto them. Absolutely. I'm fully behind you on that. It's um we are being disingenuous if we take credit for someone else's work and effort. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's fine to say I've got a strong team member. They're working hard. I'm very proud of them and how they're contributing to our team. But boy, if we ever steal, if you will, the, the credit or good work of another, we just shatter our credibility and reputation. Yeah. The leader, will, the, the, our direct report, our colleague won't trust us. They'll question us. Uh, they perform in, in a in a weaker way. Uh, it would be devastating for me mm -hmm. if I ever um, felt I robbed somebody of their good work, goodwill, and effort. Yeah, we, we just can't do that. Yeah. We just can't. It's not and leadership. Yeah, and that's why the we word is is very important in that as well, is that you get into the habit of being we, not I, not you, you know, here's what I have done, like saying here's what we have done collectively as an as a department or or whatever. And I and I think that's in that's incredibly and in, incredibly important as well. I think if you do all the things that you've talked about here, um, Bill, I think then as we said, when you have to have those difficult conversations, you can have them in a much more uh, you know, safe and trusting environment, because if you've been good with your feedback, if you've been good with your recognition, and now I have to say here, you know, Bill, there's something that we just, we need to chat about here. There's something, and here's some ideas I have. I'd love to hear your ideas, but something we have to, you know, remediate or whatever. You're going to be much more open to that uh, yes. and less defensive than you would be if I, if I rarely spoke to you or rarely gave you feedback or recognition and I just out yeah. of the blue said, no we need question. to talk about this. No, no question about that. The other, you know, I've got a, I have a practice that I encourage for leaders of people. And my presumption is a one-on-one, -on -one, a formal, 15 to 30 minute conversation is happening certainly every other week. Mm -hmm. So when I encourage one-on-ones and when I develop leaders in one-on-ones, the last, the last item on the agenda is I've got it. I've got a one piece of feedback for you and it's this. Now, before you leave, I need a piece of feedback. So could you mm -hmm. tell me, how did I conduct the meeting last week? I would welcome some feedback on the presentation I gave. Um, I, I would welcome some feedback on how am I supporting you or developing you? But my point is, in a one-on-one, -on -one, I encourage it being built into the one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a piece of feedback, and I'm inviting a piece of feedback. To your point, John, so when I have to have a harder conversation on feedback, and it might have to be rehabilitative, I am much more received for it because I've already asked for feedback historically with that person. Mm -hmm. Does that does that make sense? No, no, that makes and I think that makes absolute sense. And I and I think that's a really, really important point as well. And I think that's a thing that would surprise a lot of people. That's why I think it's a great exercise and people should take that away. Because I guarantee a lot of people would be surprised if if at the end of a meeting like that, you know, their 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 boss turned around and said, Oh, I'd like some feedback from you. I think that would shock most people in a good way. In a good way. I um you know, I'm I'm being a little self-interest here. In my book, I speak to the place of one-on-one. -on -one. So I actually have an agenda, a recommended agenda in the book that includes the last point is asking for feedback. Right. So 
it, I, I do know it. it. Leaders do it. They find it helpful, uh, authentic, um, mutual. It works. Mm -hmm. It works. Well, listen, Bill, this has been fantastic. All of Bill's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Uh, thank you for that. So it's been a delight being here. Thank you for what you do for so many of us to find a place and a voice. Um, okay. I am the founder of C3 Leadership. Uh, I do leadership development, typically for middle managers and senior leaders. I design content, deliver content, and it tends to be in the area of emotional intelligence and how do I more effectively develop people. Uh, I do executive coaching and um, Fortunately, I've been doing it for 30 years and I still love it. Hmm. Well, just, that's a, you can't beat that if you're doing it for uh, something for 30 I years. Do, and you still love love it. It. That's, that's a gift in itself. Yeah, it is. So thank so, you for allowing me to put this out there. Um, oh, yeah, of course. So, thank you, Bill. And thank you all for watching and listening. And I will see you all again soon. Thank you. Thank you all.